In this tutorial for LabVIEW for LEGO Mindstorms, we'll be looking at for loops, iterations and shift registers. We'll start by going to the NXT programming subpalette and then selecting structures and then for loop. And we'll drag out a for loop like this. Now the difference between a for loop and a while loop is that the for loop will run for a particular number of iterations and we set that number using the loop count or this n up in the top left hand corner. I'll use a control for this example but you could also use a constant or you could have it set dynamically based on something that's happened earlier in your program. And let's run our loop for five times. And as the loop is running through I'd also like to, to display the iteration or the step number that we're up to inside the loop. So I've added a, an indicator for that as well. Now if we run this loop, it's all going to happen very quickly, so I'm also going to put in a wait uh, for half a second, so I'll set that to 0 0.5, and then let's see what happens when we run this. And you see the iteration counted, look like it counted from 1 to 4, but if we run it again, you'll see it actually starts at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. If we want to change that so that it counts up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then we could insert an addition operator and we could add in 1 to the value of the iteration each time it goes through the loop. So if we run this now, you'll see it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This isn't really our iteration anymore, so let's call these our x values. We'll create a multiplication operator. So we'll take that value and we'll multiply it by 2 and display that result and we'll call that Y. And then let's run this and you'll see that our Y values are always double whatever our X values are. So what if instead of doubling the step we want to double the previous result? So in this example we start with the number 1, it's displayed in the front panel, and we multiply it by 2. Now really what we would like to be able to do is take this value and then feed it back in next time around. So we can do this with something called a shift register. So you right click on the tunnel, that's the name for the place where a value feeds into or out of a loop, and select replace with shift register. And now if we wire this through and run this, you'll see the values go 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. Let's also add an indicator to show the result at the end of the loop. And we'll call this result. Now can you guess what value is going to display in the result when this loop finishes? Let's have a look and find out. So you notice it went 1, 2, 4, 8, 16 and then the result came up 32 and that's because the multiplication is done after the display inside the loop. So there was the 16 that came in, was displayed, we multiplied that by 2 and that very last loop it was a 32 that came out at the end. Now here's a pretty useful example of how a shift register can be used to keep score in a game. Imagine there's a touch sensor attached to a basketball hoop so that every time the ball goes through the hoop the touch sensor is bumped and two points are added to the score. If the touch sensor hasn't been bumped then the value on the wire at the end of the loop remains the same. So we've got the bump here, we come in here and we add two to it and then that's the new value that goes onto that shift register next time around. If the touch sensor hasn't been bumped then in this false case you see that the value on the shift register isn't changed. For another game you could extend this idea by having another shift register carrying the number of lives remaining so you could have a pair of shift registers going through the loop or even more. You could have one of these counting the score for each player in a two or more player game. Something else that's pretty cool is that you can add elements to a shift register so that more than one value can be stored and fed back into the loop. This might be useful if you want to do some sort of averaging. For example in this case 
the ultrasound sensor, which can sometimes be a bit flaky, the readings from it are being taken and fed back into a shift register and the last three values are being averaged. That example is a little bit confusing, so let's have a look at a slightly easier to follow one. This example is based on the Fibonacci sequence. Uh, the Fibonacci sequence is a sequence where the first two numbers are 0 and 1 and then each subsequent term is the sum of the previous two numbers. So it goes 0, 1 and then 0 plus 1 gives us 1 and then 1 plus 1 gives us 2, 1 plus 2 equals 3, 2 and 3 equals 5 and so on. Now in this case uh, I've made a while loop because I didn't want to decide how many times to go through the loop in advance and each time the loop starts over the most recent value goes into the top element with all the previous values being dropped down to the next element and of course the value in the last element is quietly forgotten when that happens. The two inputted values are displayed in the indicators as Tn-2 and Tn-1 and they're summed together in Tn. And notice that I've seeded these elements with different values, uh, a 1 and a 0. Uh, however often it's useful to seed them with the same value like I did in the ultrasound example. Now let's see what happens when this runs. So 0, 1 and their sum is 1 and then it's waiting till I press the button on the NXT and now I get 1 and 1 is 2, 1 and 2 is 3, 2 and 3 is 5, and so on. And these numbers get pretty big pretty quickly. And there we have it, an introduction to for loops, iterations and shift registers.